hello guys and welcome to this new video in medico channel so i hope you guys are doing good um this topic of entity component system is getting more and more attention these last uh years and um, i thought it might be a good idea if i kind of make some research about this and um, you know make something out so that people can actually learn from my experience now um i don't master entity component system yet but um, the list I know I can share that with you and that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video now as you can see on the title right here it let's make a custom hybrid entity component system so why hybrid we're gonna be seeing that in a couple of seconds so so I think it's really important to learn this because even though you're not gonna use this for your game this will pretty much give you a better understanding of computer architecture how um, to use the power of language like C++ because C++ is a really powerful language and uh, it has a lot to offer that we don't actually use uh, when we when we're using procedural architecture or object-oriented architecture and things like that so the ECS is actually um, a really important things even though it's a little bit complex depending on how you want to do it normally because it can actually be simple too but it depends on how you how you actually gonna be implementing that so this video is um, is actually about how to create an entity component system and we're gonna be creating that with C++ and SDL so SDL is actually because we want to have a windows where we actually gonna be drawing things and test some component like collision component or rigid body component because we're gonna be creating all of that in this video series now I've been talking a lot about entity component system and you are probably a beginner in the uh, game dev uh, uh, environment and you don't know what on earth I'm talking about and uh, I just want to make this clear also if you are a beginner in the area then this video will really help you because my real focus is for those people who are seeking who are actually trying to get started with entity component system this is not meant for expert in quote unquote expert if you it depends on what you define by expert but yeah my idea is to actually give like a start one because I myself had a lot of problem with entity component system I tried to learn it and I was all confused about everything I didn't get a clue about what was going on yeah there was like thousands of things that has to be understood why we're doing this like that and it was so different from what I know and so it was really confusing for me so that's why I'm doing this video to actually help you actually get started with this without being frustrated with too much complicated stuff so that was like a long introduction now what is an entity component system what is the ECS now one thing that we know is this this is mostly encountered in the game development um, world because um, you know game development need like it need more uh, need to be efficient and things like that so that's why the entity component system is more um, used in that area but the ECS is nothing but um, you know a design pattern which allows you to you know to actually have great flexibility in designing the overall software architecture of, of your engine or your game or whatever you are actually creating with that so it's it's another architecture like the OOP like object oriented programming which we're gonna be talking a little bit about in a couple of seconds it's not um, it's but it's not OOP it can actually include uh, OOP but it's a different architecture we're gonna be seeing how this is uh, now uh, specifically defined now just want to make a short mention about the o OOP architecture because it's important to know the difference between both of them before we speak more about the ECS now the object oriented architecture is pretty um, understandable because it simply represents the way we see things in the real world you know we have like a game object for example you see uh, we have for example a car the car will have things like uh, I don't know uh, speed something like that so we kind of take all the things that we have in the real world and group that to group all of them together in a name which is the class and uh, we actually use inheritance and abstraction to actually have things like polymorphism so if you don't know this kind of thing I'm talking about polymorphism inheritance 
then you probably want to go out and understand you know the idea of game of um, object oriented but i'm pretty sure you know because no one will come across trying to understand entity component system if he has no idea about object oriented so i think you pretty much know that so but this this um uh this oop it's it's a good it's a really good architecture but it has its own limits you see whenever let's say for example if i wanted to create here this example is not so perfect let's say i'm gonna say something really crazy here but don't don't mind that so if i wanted to create like a car which was at the same time a vegetation you see you know then i'll have a problem with inheritance because we have this vegetation right here and we have this car how will i actually make this car inherit from vegetation since it's inher inheriting from vehicle you see that's the problem with with the um, object oriented architecture it has some limit but it's really important for me to mention that um, it's really uh, enough to create a game or create a game engine or whatever you might want to create because this has been there for many years and it has proven to be good so it's not that we will start saying things like OOP is a bad thing no that's not a point OOP is a really good um, architecture to create games so but it has its own limits and we actually want to be uh, getting over that using the ECS things like how the um, object oriented actually represent uh, data in the memory that's something which is not so efficient that's why because you know the computer when he's trying to read something in the memory he will read all the addresses before getting to the value that you want and the object oriented don't actually put things in the row in the memory you know you don't actually put your variable in a row in the memory they kind of use a different pattern for that which which make the reading and the cache thing like cache is really bad using the object oriented which the ECS actually made better so that's why people are moving more and more to the ECS and as you probably know unity is now working working on, uh, on making the engine with ECS you know only ECS and that's because ECS has has proven that it's really a good architecture for things like that now um, if you remember on the title in the first page we I talked about the fact that we were actually going to build a hybrid entity component system now this graphic right here is not the perfect representation of what an entity component system is but it's just an idea of yeah how you can actually start building because you can see the ECS the name is actually um, composed from three elements entity component and system now we have the entity and we have the component and we have the system now the entity in a pure ECS so I'm talking about pure ECS the the, the idea of I mean from the basic the, in the in a pure ECS the entity is nothing but just like a unique ID it's just like uh, a, a, a number which represent a num uh, uh, um, an object I'll call it like that because I don't know how to entity is already like an object but whatever so in a pure ECS we have entity which normally should be nothing but an ID so we know okay we have an ID of one we know entity with ID one and that's just how we represent that object with an ID now component are all the things that we are going to attach to this entity to actually give him some um, um, some uh, how can I say that features for example if I want to build a game and I want to make an object who will be affected by the gravity I'm probably gonna be attaching like rigid body component to that object transform since the object is gonna be moving needs like a transform collider because I'm probably gonna be handling collision physics and things like that so these are all these are just component and uh, one thing which is really important to know about component is in a pure ECS um, uh, in a pure ECS these are just values or data so a simple structure for a transform for example would be a simple structure which has like the the, the position of the player the position of the object the the, uh, the scale and the rotation for example nothing else it has no function it has no nothing like you know you get what I mean 
Now, in order for us to actually update this component of this entity, we need like systems. Now, um, there is there is a lot of you know of opinion about how system should be implemented in ECS, even in a pure ECS system. Some people think uh, each component should have its its own ECS, it, its own system, and uh, all those things. Because uh, let's say, for example, you have um, an, an entity which is gonna be, like I said, affected by the by the gravity. So you wanna add like rigid body, and instead of having a component only for rigid body, you can create another. Uh, instead of having a system only for rigid body, you can create instead a system called physics, which will handle things like collision. Uh, uh, you know rigid body and transform for example instead of just creating each system for each component so that's why the system it's a little bit different depending on who, who is actually creating this ECS so that's the idea of a pure entity component system and you know we have like the entity manager which is the guy who who has like an eyes on everything going on which will handle the memory caching um, you know logging and things like that all of that he will be the guy who create entities and destroy them everything you might want to imagine so we say manager you know what manager mean it's something who is someone who kind of you know handle data and handle information and resource and things like that so that's the overview of a pure pure ECS now what we're actually going to build is a little bit different it's not a pure ECS that's why it's a hybrid ECS and I said hybrid because it's not a pure ECS so I think that's clear now we will normally have our entity which will you know take components now you can see components are now inside of our entity entity would be a unique pointer and it will take component and instead of having system outside of component we will actually attach the system to the component that's how we're going to be doing this to actually make this um, to actually reduce uh, you know the amount of code to write and the complexity also because remember the idea is to get started with the ACS so if we kind of start with the pure ECS it will be more complicated but I'm probably going to be uploading um, another video or probably more videos about how to actually make a pure ECS but for now I want to make this because this is actually really good and uh, yeah, I would simply recommend you to, you know, to stick to stick around and watch this. So we're gonna be using, as I said, SDL, C++, and code block to actually make that. So if you have any problem or any concern or anything like that, I won't show you how to install SDL and code block and things like that. If you wanna, uh, if you wanna do that, I I'll provide the link in the description video. If you if you ever be on my channel you know I created a video series about how to make a game engine in C++ using SDL and code block so I show there how to install SDL and code block so this should be normal stuff I don't want to spend that time because we have a lot to do and if I want to keep my eyes on that kind of thing then it would be really bad for me now I don't want to be talking too much let's get started with real coding stuff So here we are. The first thing you have to do is to create a project, a console application if you're using CodeBlock or you know Visual Studio. So I've created a project right here. As you can see, it's an empty project. Now we want to create some important files and folders right here. So the way I'm actually going to be doing that is I'm actually going to be opening my uh, my project folder. So bring it here. So I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it ECS so just like that and I want to go into my project and create a new file so it's gonna be a header file and I actually want to go and enter that and there I just want to say ECS.h so header file so to say that's just normal stuff so I don't want all these old school things I want to use the pragma ones so this is actually going to be the you know 
the base where we're actually going to be uh, implementing our ECS system because this could be a beginning of a bigger project where you actually have uh, more than just your entity component system that's why I prefer to put it in that folder right there now we want to define want to include some couple of important um, you know um, preprocessor that we might need to include the first we're gonna need to include array we're gonna be needing this for to actually store our components for entities so we also want to include a uh, bit set bit set is actually gonna be this is um, this is a new version of uh, bit field I think so bit field it's also an array you know which is a bit an array of bit and uh, we're actually going to be using this to check if a component has um, like if a if an entity has a component this is actually going to be the base for us to actually know that so we also want to include include um, the iOS stream because we might need this to actually make some debugging things so that's why it's important to actually include that now we are actually going to be defining some simple um, name right here just because we want to use that to define some couple of things in this file right here because we are actually going to be writing the code for the entity class in another file but we actually want to define some labels so I, do, I don't know the name I'm going to be giving to this but this is just uh, so the computer knows that there is a class called entity but wherever we might want to use this we'll simply go out and include the, the true file where we implement our class entity so this is just like a definition to actually know so you have that and one thing which is really important is we want each component in our uh, system in our you know entity component system to have a specific type or a type ID so that's why we actually gonna be creating a custom type which will give us you know um, the possibility to actually create our own types so say component type ID it's gonna be nothing but STD oh come on man oh STD size T so this is nothing but a high def a type def for uh, unsigned integer as you can see right here when I put my mouse over it it's nothing it's nothing but unsigned integer I could have simply say unsigned integer that would be the same thing so just a way to write it now we are actually going to be creating um, two functions right here which are going to be important for us to create this unique type this unique component type ID now we want to create the first function I'm gonna say inline because we're doing everything in this file right here it returns the component ID I'll say get unique ID or get get unique component ID so if you want me to call it like that get unique component ID so all it basically does is we have a static variable right here we're gonna say call it um, static component type ID we say last ID so we initialize it by zero to make sure it's an unsigned we put the u at the end of it and we simply say return plus id plus plus so every time we return the value we increase this value since it is static it will be initialized once with zero and every time we will call this function the value will be increased depending on when and how we call it but now this is not now uh, the variable we actually going to be using to create that type so because we want to be able to attach this component type id to a component that's why we also actually added this class up here and for to actually do that we can create like a template function which will also take a component as a type and uh, that type will be then somehow attached to the id I say somehow because we don't directly attach the type to the component but since the variable we're going to be using is going to be static every time we will call this function with that type it will always give the same ID back that's the idea of that and to actually do that we'll say template and uh, we say type name no, no type def type name and I'll simply say t and I'll also say inline 
it's really important to put uh, this in line and static stuff it's really important to this later if you want when we when we when we are done with this you can actually remove that and see the effect if i remember i'll probably show you what i mean by that component type id so this actually give our component depending on the type so if i have a component like um like a transform for example then i want this to create a specific id for the transform every time i will call this function with the type transform it will always return the same value that's the idea so i'll say no except this is because if this function ever crash we don't want this function to you know give any exception because this is really important if this function ever crash or if anything ever fail then we're probably going to stop the program we want to stop the program this actually this this is why we use this no except it's probably more involved with this no except but i can actually tell you exactly but it was important to me because this actually gave me what i want so so i'll say static is said now it's really important to me because all component that we're going to be creating in this entity component system are going to be inheriting from component so the transform the rigid body the collider or the sprite renderer whatever you might want to create but i want to check every time i want to create an id that the class i have actually inherit or is a child class for component that's why i want to make that and c actually offers a way of to, uh, for doing that so i'll simply say std is base or no is base of so if it's a base of i'll say component no not that id component yeah so and i'll put my type here and i'll take this actually return uh, this actually has like this value right here is a boolean which says okay this is um a component uh, which which uh, actually tell me if this is based of this class here so if this one is based on this base of this so to say so and i can put a message i can say component i can say type not based on component you could leave it empty doesn't matter that's that's not in point actually so and uh, yeah I want to create so if we have no problem with this one so we want to create a static const static const because if you don't put the const then it won't work <laughs> that's why it's important it's gonna be created on and will always be the same value when we get unique let's say get unique and here we have it we can simply say return type id so you could have said like why why don't you simply return get unique well because i want this variable to be static and constant every time i will pass this type to this function by calling it when calling it it will always give me the same the same value we're going to be testing that and you will see what i mean exactly by that so and i also want to add some couple of things that are going to be important to actually uh, make this thing more consistent for example we want to have a max number of component per entity because you don't want an entity to have like thousand component you should give you know as much as the computer can handle so that's why it, it's important to actually make entities and i'm gonna say five thousand this is the max number of entity don't ask me why five thousand it's just a number it could have been 20,000 depending on what you want to do you can add whatever number there so it doesn't matter but you know it has to depend on your computer power and how your computer will actually handle the resource that it has so that's why I'm using this so max component so the max amount of component that we have per entity should be 32 and again this is just something like that and we also want to define some couple of types right here which are actually going to be important to us because we don't want to write this every time like component component bit set it's going to be a std bit set 
and we'll say max component so this is actually just another way of creating an array of bits so to say so it's just an alias because I don't want to write this this every time so that's why I'm calling it like that so I'm gonna say component component what am I writing here component list or component array whatever you might want to call it std array and I'll say component put a pointer and uh, we have max components so these are some important uh, things that we need to have set up before we start creating entities and other things and other things like that so the next thing we want to create is our entity we want to start creating our entity because it's one of it's a core it's a core component of this architecture and yeah we want to do that so go ahead and create a new class so i'm going to say class and i'm sim simply going to say entity and make sure you put it in your ecs folder you can create another folder for that if you want to but it all depends on you I'm simply going to take a header file so I, I won't take like a cpp file for that I'm going to be doing everything in a single header file so entity we have it here and we don't forget our pragma ones so the first thing I want to include right here is uh, the ECS that we just created also want to include um, vector I think we might want to need that so I think so yeah so we also want to include memory because we actually want to be using um, um, unique pointers so it's important to include that now I haven't tested this ECS so you guys see what I mean by this because we haven't created a component class yet so we're gonna be doing that later so just for now just move forward with that so we have our entity so we have everything added for now okay now an entity needs some important uh, component like for example we need the component array or component list so to say which is gonna be all the component that this this guy will have a pointer to all component that this guy will have I will say component list so this list will actually give us access to the component of this entity and we'll be able to interact with that outside but we also need like a unique pointer list I haven't found a, a, a more optimized way of doing that yet but it's it's pretty good right now and i'm still working on, on making this better but you know just in case you guys want to write some bad comments down there so think about it before writing it but it's 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 really nice for now so we have um comp bit set and now we will create this vector right here which is going to be a unique pointer to each component it's really important to actually have something like that unique unique pointer so and we'll say component because whenever we want to get a component from an entity we will simply take it from this unique pointer right here and cast it down or cast it to a normal pointer and actually interact with it but we we actually gonna be handling all those in this guy right here now it's gonna be more clear as we write more code here so don't don't worry about that now we need some couple of important function in an entity the first one is for example add component now here is the problem we don't know which component we're gonna be adding to an entity so um, we cannot just say okay we will simply uh, give a specific type to the component we want to add we can have like thousand component in our program so we kind of need a way um, in which we can add any kind of component so any component that inherit from the component class that's why um, we actually gonna be create like a template function with uh, with an undefined amount of parameters because a transform for example will take the position the scale and the rotation as parameter 
but the rigid body for example will take like gravity scale for example as parameter it only has one in this case and you know you want to create a function which will fit for all that kind of component that's why we need like a template function with undefined uh, pr parameters so the, the amount of parameters shouldn't be fixed so in order for us to do that we we'll simply say template and we'll say type name say t and the second one is going to be the parameters so you can call it you can call it t type args type arguments so we simply say inline um hope you guys know what inline mean is it's just a keyword which is used to optimize the compilation process of the code so just don't want to get fit into that but uh, in this case it doesn't change the fact that the code would work if you don't edit so don't worry about that i just like when i write my function in the class definition i always like to put the inline in front of it to make sure that the compiling the compiler processor um, the compiling process doesn't take too long because the the linker is trying to file find the cpp file to link to it and things like that so all that kind of stuff i i don't want to so we say add component and it's gonna be taking t args so what we just created up here and i forgot something up here we need to put this tree dot right here to actually tell the computer that we don't know how much argument this is going to be so this is the idea of that so um and you want to add a double reference right here to actually be able to access the parameters so and we'll give it the name arguments it doesn't matter the name you put there it's just like a parameter that you pass to a function and uh, yeah we don't forget anything now we want to create the component so we have like a pointer from the type t that we've created you say comp you can call it whatever you want and you simply create like new and uh, t you see std forward you want to push all your argument that you have from the constructor of the current class and yeah that's oh what am i doing this is the type so you want to say args that's just put your tree dot right here so and now you want to say comp Since we don't have a component right here the way we can do this is to create a component class first because we need to actually have a component with some uh, important parameters to actually add it to our object right here so I'm gonna go and create a new component so I'm gonna say class I don't need it's only a header file since it's gonna be an abstract class so let me put like the name up here so wait. component and I'm gonna put it in my ECS folder and I'm gonna throw it there it has a dot what is this dot h yeah great hope everything is normal there yes yes so we need to add our include our no, I need the pragma ones first. This is all crazy, man. So now I also want to define like a fake class right here for this component to actually know what it what an entity is. So you can see um I'll simply say default because we don't want to implement anything here default and uh, yeah the protected is not needed so we have some public so we're gonna be adding like an entity now this entity right here is going to be the entity to which this component is gonna be attached 
we want to do that because um, you see later as we start creating more component we want the component to actually interact together and to actually do that on an entity we need a way to actually bring all of those component uh, attached to one entity and that's how we do it so when we create a component we attach it to an entity so that we can actually access that component via the entity that's why the entity class has like eight component get component so we can actually access that now we need some virtual function right here bool we have in it which should also have an empty implementation this will simply return true for this component right here and uh, we have the draw because we know each component at least has draw update in it so that's why we're actually adding that so and we have update So this is basically what we need in this class and there is nothing we have to add. So we're going to be creating a comp another component in a couple of seconds to actually add more custom things to it. But yeah, I think so far that that should be it. So we switch back to our entity and there we want to include our component. So now we can really uh, do something out of that that's how we can actually say component uh, give me a second I need to find this okay now we can simply say component entity is equal to this this is how we can set we can attach a component to an entity but now we still need to store this and if you remember we said we were actually going to start this using unique pointers so that's why we actually gonna be doing a unique pointer of type component and I'm gonna say UPTR for unique pointer and I'm gonna convert my comp into this so the comp we just created up here I go out and comp and kind of you know convert that into a unique pointer that I can store and now I can simply go out and say components in place back std move uptr and we have it stored there now we want to make sure you initialize the component when you add it to an, to an entity so you want to say if this should actually go down I'm coming to that so if comp in it so if the initialization went without any problem then you want to make sure you edit and set the bit fail the bit uh, the bit set of that of that uh, of that component in in your entity bit bit set and you know whatever so and to do that we simply say comp list and we simply kind of add that we simply call it get component type id and we'll say equal comp put it in here and we have to do the same thing for our bit set because later we'll try we'll try using we'll try to actually know if a, if an entity has like a component uh, using this bit set right here this bit set will actually tell us if you know if this guy has this and we'll set it to true so that's that's it and uh, yeah we also want to add this to this element only if the initialization went properly because we don't want to you know mess around and in case someone want to play around with this component you also want to return a reference to it that's what oh sorry that's why we return a reference up here and since I'm returning a reference I need to add this to actually access the value and take the reference of that value and if we don't have that then we want to return a null pointer a null reference so to say yeah since C++ doesn't give like 
a specific way of returning uh, null reference so you need to actually think yourself how to achieve that and you can see right here I simply take the null pointer and return the reference to that so it's just basically a static cast and it's all normal now we can add component so let's say we want to let let implement the get function first let implement the get component first so we can actually try to see how we can do this now again we have the same problem you don't know which component you're going to be getting from the entity so you need a component you need a function or you need a way to actually get the component without it being specific to a component and for that we also need a template so type name and go down and say inline get component so to get component and you can return it as a const since it's a reference that we're going to be getting I forgot to put the yeah want to return component type and simply say auto so I want to get the pointer if you remember my comp array comp list you want to say get I forgot one thing up here this get component needs a type it's really important if you don't put this type then which you know if you remember as we as we were writing this it was a template you need to give a type to actually know which one to get from this it's really important to not forget that so um, where was I in entity so we get component with type so I just want to kind of copy that um, and go down here and paste it that's how I can simply get a pointer out of this so I'll simply say return static cast static cast ptr pointer so that's how we can get a component from an entity now let us create a simple transform component to actually see how this is actually going to be so say transform so we need to put it in this folder right here I only want a header file so that's enough for me um, yeah so yes yes so and again I want to add my pragma ones and I want to include um, component and for that I need to make sure this guy inherit from component so So a uh, transform basically has um, the position, the rotation, and the scale. Now they should normally be vectors uh, and not just variable like this, float x and y. That's why I want to add a vector. I want to add a vector class. I'm just I'm not gonna be writing the code for that. I'm just gonna explain to you. Um, so just go out and create in, you know, let just call it vect. 2d and you can add it in the root of your of whatever so just remove the header and the c++ so we can create this yes okay so let me kind of grab the code and paste it and explain to you what is going on so just paste it here now we just include the iOS stream because we also create a stream because when we use the T out function we actually want to actually we actually want to you know print out what we have for this for this crazy class of vector now a vector is pretty simple it has it's also a template class 
because you can create vector for integers for double for unsigned int and whatever you want to do so it has these two parameters x and y which has this type up here and you have two constructor we over so we simply overload the constructor and we set the value now we also implemented addition subtraction so we uh we some kind of redefine the operators uh, plus minus and uh, you know this minus equal and plus equal multiplication of vectors because we didn't want to do it for each parameter so we, we don't want to when we add two vectors add each parameter together so we kind of create this right here which is just a template class and depending on how you create it you will have a specific type of vector and down here I've already defined some types vector for, with integer so you can see I simply pass the type int and this will create a vector integer if I want to and you can see um, I will make sure I put the code in the description below for those of you who want to have access on that so you could actually learn from this I don't want to spend much that much time on the vector but you can simply go out and do this like this and that will also be uh, with no that, that won't be a problem so I simply say include vec yeah it should be should be finding that file I don't know why it's not finding it yeah whatever maybe just vec 2d that h let me try to comp no, I can compile this right now let me include that right here and see include yeah. transform I'm trying to compile this you see it's not finding this file I don't know why hmm give me a second to find it. Uh, it was because I didn't you know go back to the previous folder before adding it and all that kind of stuff so should be working right now plus entity we have it up here what did it say entity does not name a type are you kidding me of course it does oh ah uh, yeah it does yeah I know I'm sorry <laughs> the name is wrong so just want to make sure everything is working so far okay the transform now I'll simply go out and say vect so I want to plot vector I'll say position and I could simply yeah vect scale because the scale will also be a vector but the rotation is just gonna be like the angle rotation now if you remember our component class had three function three method we have like void init we want to override it so that's important and we can also add final or oh, I'm sorry what what is going on here so override and final just you know because it's nice so final and we want to initialize all these parameters so position since I have this vector class I can simply say zeros zero and it will create a vector with x and y equal to zero and the scale I'm simply gonna say once so it's gonna create a unit vector the rotation why did I put rotation rotation is just gonna be equal to zero now the transform class does not actually need a draw or update function because there is nothing going on by the update of a transform that's why I I leave this like this because we'll, we will definitely call this function for this transform even though he doesn't have that we have to call that so that's why I made it like this abstract class to actually be able to have that so I don't need to write it here so the transform class is done now what we want to do is to go out and try to create an entity component and add uh, a transform to it and see if it's working so we want to go to the main function right here and include entity hope we don't have error message things like that 
entity we're trying to compile and see I hate this thing get out of my way so get out of my way let me kind of compile we have a lot going on so let me kind of see what is wrong right here um, entity we have type name that's normal they say in line TR was not declared of course it was ah okay I'm sorry some small things like that that are sometimes difficult to watch here what is this parameter parts not inspected where we are in the com ah no yeah I know it should be like this ah this is a lot man so what is wrong right here conflicting return type oh it was bold I'm sorry yeah you know it's not so easy okay we have it done okay let me go to the main and here I simply want to create an entity I'll say entity and I'll say call it like entity it's equal to new entity so and I'll say entity add component and I'll simply say transform why isn't it finding the transform now a uh, second we haven't implemented the transform we need to overload the uh, Mm, this is actually not the way we want this to be done we want this to be done here up here so because if we initialize it here then as we add it to a component this init function is going to be called and the value that we can pass up here is going to be destroyed so we don't want to lose the value because if I call this constructor instead then I'll have a problem so I'll just put like yeah this is enough for now um, yeah position of x is equal x position y is equal y so the float and the rest are still gonna be zero um, yeah you can add more parameter if you want to just leave it like that the destructor you can simply go out and see default so this is actually not needed because you know there's nothing we can initialize here everything is going to be done up here so we simply don't need all of these all we can do is add more constructors and um, we can add another one with scale so let me say float scale on the x-axis but scale on the y-axis and maybe rotation also so and this is simply gonna be scale x is gonna be this and I can duplicate that scale y rotation so actually don't have to mix this simply call this rod so we have basically this done what is wrong yeah forgot the type forget a lot that's weird so we have that add component transform was not declared uh, I know transform yeah so I can pass parameters I could simply you can see we have like all the definition of our so that's something that really good you can put hundred now then try let's try to get this and print this out if we have this entity with this value so we say entity get component say transform and I'll simply say position dot x dot x and I'll simply use the std c out and print this out and use another std end line so let's try to test this and see if this is working if our console shows the value 
of this transform that we have up here. Mm, there's something wrong. Operator std std. So what is wrong? I don't know. Get component that. Let me see this. So as you can see, I forgot the L here. I don't know why I have such weird things going on here. So if I go out and compile this, you can see we have the 100 right here. I don't know if this is actually going to work with the vector. I haven't tried it. Yeah, it should. Yeah, you can see because I implemented this. I implemented this function in my uh, in my vector so that I can print a, ve print a vector out without having to, you know, put specific values. And as you can see, we just created a basic entity component system. We have one component, we have an entity, we can add a component, we can change the value of that component. And now what we basically only need is a manager which will take all these components and uh, actually manage them the way we want them to. So that's basically it. Now we need to move forward. We still have a lot to implement because our entity class um, is not finished yet. We need to add more things like, for example, we want to check if uh, an entity has a component. And uh, I wanted to show you something before we do this. Let me go out and show you this. Um, go here in the main. So if I say, for example, let me include the include ECS. So just want to go down here and say, get component id and i want to put transform here so i want to do this like oh let me put i want to do this like three times you will see we'll have the same value you see it's always the same value always the same value and that's exactly the idea this this um this id is attached to this transform component later as we add another component you will see it's simply going to be taking that in consideration and he will increase the value of the of the last id that we've created here and that's how we can create new type for each component and that's just something i love about this the way of this way of doing it now um as i said we need to add um another function to the entity we actually want to know if an entity has um, a component so we simply gonna say type name I need to kind of be more focused on on errors and things like that because I'm actually messing up a lot inline ball and we simply say has component it's also going to be a template as you know we don't know which component we want to check so that's why we need a template function for that so it's gonna be a const a const because you know when you when you return a constant you can't change anything on the on the value this whole function is gonna be a constant it's just like the value inside here is gonna be pasted wherever you call it something like that so you see so we simply say return and we say um, comp bit set you remember our bit set and to actually know if it has it, if you remember, each component has a unique type. Whenever I get, whenever I call the get component type ID with the type of that component, he will always return the same value. So that's why I can simply go out and take the type which is given to this, to this function and simply, you know, return that right here. And that's, uh, that's basically it. We can test this. We can simply go here and say entity since we have added the the transform to it say has component and we say transform i don't know if this is going to print something out i never tried to print a bull boolean ah one you see that's just one so if i give a weird thing i don't know i haven't tried this is this going to work no yeah because we haven't defined that what am i doing i mean that's just normal so you see like that we can know if it has a component okay um, um let us go back to our entity 
now we need to implement some couple of important function like draw update you know things like that destroy we also need a parameter here which actually tells us if this component is, is if this entity is still alive now this is gonna be needed later on when you refresh your manager your call your entity list you want to know if an entity is still alive and if not you have to destroy it, things like that that's why you need a function or method whatever you call it bool you say is active so this simply returns a const this simply return a boolean and you will say return active and you can use this to actually destroy your object and the destroy if you want to destroy an object an entity I'm still in the old school way so void to destroy you can simply set active to false then the manager will know this entity is no longer gonna be active so you want to destroy it that's why you simply want to do this that's also important to do now you need to have then your void you have a draw function all entity are, are not to be drawn but you know you need to actually put that because what we're actually going to be drawing are, it's gonna be components so so the draw function is gonna be in line simply gonna be looping through the component of this entity and draw whatever is to be drawn if anything has to be is to be drawn then simply say auto and we we'll simply say component comp and then we will go inside of our unique pointers not just you know because unique pointer are preferable for this kind of thing that's why you see when people create like games they always use unique pointer to refer to object to game objects because you know unique pointer are better for this kind of job that's why you want to use that also so i don't need this since i'm just going to be calling the draw function of the component i'll say comp draw so you want to do the same thing for update so we want to do update so i think that's all we need for this now there is also one thing um no just want to put this because i don't right now doesn't take any parameter just want to put this like that now um yeah i have an idea i think this is not the good way of doing this now uh, if you if you if you use um, some game engine like unity you will know that whenever you create a game object it always you know has this component transform all object has a transform component because all object need to be you know to be specified somewhere on the screen that's why we can simplify that by just going here include transform and when we create an entity we simply attach a transform to it and it need to be with zero zero or the rest is just gonna be let's say we have to do it this way because if we leave this guy here then we probably wanna we can do it this way uh, this is our normal um, we remove this we simply say default and uh, this is normal then we can come down here and simply say vect so this is going to initialize it with 0 and 0 and vect this is going to be with 1 and 1 so just to reduce the amount of code that I have to write up here I can simply set this to default and here if we use this constructor then the position is going to be set to this but these are going to be taken with these values and up here we can so you could have add um, you know another constructor remove this one and only leave the scale so you have like three constructor for this component so that means when we create a component 
we can simply we can naturally add a transform to it so here if I compile this uh, there is always something going on what is wrong oh this is up so they didn't change this name to update so we compile and that should work and as you can see we have a transform component and it's better like that this makes sure that you always have a transform because component like rigid body collider or whatever sprite renderer will always need to have access on the transform component and if you create an entity that has no transform and you put like a rigid body on it then this will create problem because the rigid body needs the transform component to actually operate properly that's why you want to make sure no one will ever avoid or forgetting to put the transform component we put it first and then the rest is going to be managed just like that so and you can simply go out and change the value we haven't we haven't changed that yet right so let's say we change that we say entity get component transform and I can say position position yeah it's equal vect and I'm gonna say 300 200 before I print it out so I just compile this oh what happened did I compile it and compile this again okay then there is something going on let me clean this and see why um, clean compile again okay there is something going on we initialize the entity we get it here why did I say here get as component ah okay that's that's normal I get but I didn't say position I don't know how I was like what is going on here so position no what am I talking about get component I don't have anything about get component um, no, sorry so entity get component so say transform and I'll say position so let me kind of compile this and you can see we have a vector with the values that we just set it okay that's working that's fine so we basically now have our have our entity in place so there is not that much that we need to add here so we can actually move forward and create our manager our entity manager so go ahead and create a new class so this class needs uh, need to have a cpp file because i don't i don't want to make this in, in just a header file entity manager um yeah and i make sure i put it in the right folder put it there so if anything no. oh no what is this what happened oh the extension let me kind of rename the file i know that's rename now simply add a cpp at the end okay we have everything in place so just to make big things a little bit quick so we need to include the vector the memory you can simply pause the video and write if you have to so we have the entity the fake definition of the entity class just because we want to have access on that this actually protect us um, of having too much inclusion of files in files so that's why we kind of give this this class entity here and in the cpp file there we will include the real entity dot h file and use that but this is just a fake definition so yeah the constructor is already default in the structure too it needs to have a draw update and refresh and you can see we have an add entity takes a pointer to an entity we have a raise entity and we have clone entity which we're not going to be implementing actually just put them so you have an idea when you create an entity you might want to clone that entity and use that many times you could actually have that in your in your program 
so I actually going to be adding all my definitions I need to remove the constructor and uh, yeah oh there is a lot going on it's update okay yeah that's all normal so we start with the draw function and uh, yeah I forgot to mention um, down here we have the list of entities so in a pure um, entity component system we will also need to have like system bit uh, bit set for example to know which system has is being used and we could do the same principle by getting the id of the system of a system for example a static type id id of system and we have a bit a bit set which knows which system is actually added to to an entity and there we can actually use that to operate on on components so that's why but we haven't done that so it doesn't matter for us right now so to actually draw it's basic we simply need to look through our entities and draw them so there's nothing new about that the same thing needs to be done uh, for the update we can simply go out and you know circle around this entity list and update each entity and the entity which uh, will in return update uh, the components so that's basically it now add entity it's also pretty much pre uh, uh, pretty uh, simple we can simply go out and put something there so add entity simply create a unique pointer for whatever we give up here and you know put it in our entity that's basically it now uh, right now we have we already have um, need to return a null pointer here if I don't want this guy to cause me some problem now we have a basic entity um, manager in place so we haven't implement arrays or refresh uh, so we can do that that's not a problem but now we want to test this if this is working if our manager can actually handle everything as we want to so I want to go back to my main and I'm gonna say include entity manager make sure we have no problem there okay I want to create the manager I'm gonna say entity manager and I'm gonna say manager do it like that it's equal to new entity manager so and I could simply create this entity for example and say manager add entity and I will say entity and instead of so I could leave it like that instead of uh, I'm gonna be creating a, a loop so while true so I can simply go down here and say manager update manager draw we haven't we, we are not using SDL yet so that's why we, we kind of do it like that so and um, yeah that's how we can actually have the manager handling updating all our objects and draw everything on the screen now nothing is gonna be uh, working although I think it should be like we need to add a reference right am I right about this um, give me a second to check the problem was because this file right here uh, if you remember as I created it it didn't have this uh, have this has this uh, CPP extension so it, it it wasn't added by the, the to the release and debug uh, settings so that when the program is compiled and he get linked so that's why he couldn't find the definition of this function right here so that's all done but now nothing it's going to happen since we are not actually throwing or updating anything so um, I think we should probably stop this video here and I'm going to do another video and in the second video we're gonna be creating more components 
we're going to be adding more visual effect to this like uh, rigid body colliders so that we can actually interact or labels where we can actually uh, draw text on the screen so we can create each component and attach it to an entity so um yeah that's basically it um i hope you guys learned from this this is the basics of the entity component system and um, if you guys have any question any concern or if anything wasn't clear i really ask you guys to write in the comment section below and um, yeah subscribe if you haven't now see you next time ciao